my name is Simon Chapman and uh, I'm a part-time explorer and what we're now on the trail of the snow monkey. We, a lot has happened since the last time I was on film. We've travelled up the Nujang River Valley, which is a really fast, turbulent river that flows between these canyon walls. And we've got higher and higher and higher. We got slowed a lot because of landslides and we were trying to get to a valley called Duliongjan where there's a lot of tribal people live and we thought maybe they could show us where to go in the jungle. But we got to Gongshan, which is the town near the head of the valley, and there were signs up everywhere which said nobody's allowed in Duliongjan, not even Chinese people, it wasn't just for foreigners. So we had a hasty replan. Looked at a map that I found on the web and I it showed there were groups of snow monkeys which live over by the top end of the Mekong River, which here is called the Lansang. But the thing is, all the rivers run in parallel between these sort of mountain ridges that go like fingers out of the bottom end of Tibet. And to be honest, Tibet is only about 10, 20 miles away from here. So the roads run alongside the rivers. And to actually get to the Lansang, the Mekong River, we have to climb over the below mountain range, which is going to take about three days. And then we'll get to another road, and that will then get us onto where we can find these snub-nosed monkeys. So right now, this, this shot of me here is in an alpine meadow at about 4,000 metres altitude. We've been climbing, climbing, climbing. There are bits of pine forest here. This is sort of forest where the snow monkeys live. But the, the knowledge we've been told is that they're not here. There's other types of monkeys here, macaques, that we have to carry on down into the next valley, then up probably over the next mountain again. Ian's gone. He had to leave and go back home after the Galagong Mountains. And we picked up a couple of Americans with a small baby. This is meant to, for a mountain and jungle trip. Uh, it's an intre one intrepid baby, an intrepid day, baby of 14 months old with an American couple. Uh, we've also got various Chinese porters and muleteers, and we've got two horses. I've got to say, the altitude is starting to affect us up here. So it, it's a blessed relief that we're not carrying our rucksacks apart from Paul, the American guy, who's got the, uh, his little baby Juniper who's in the rucksack, the rest of us are travelling light. But even so, it, we're, we're heaving for lungfuls of air each time we're going up. And it's going to get a bit worse because we're still not at the pass. I walked really fast with one of the porters. He met up with another group of guys with horses, and I took off with them. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll just wait for the others. But the, the other guy said, oh, there's two paths. So I waited and waited, and I thought, oh, my God, everyone's gone on the other path. And I got really quite panic-stricken, and I met an old guy with some horses, and he said, no, they're up ahead, which was wrong. So I started running up the trail, and at, believe me, at three or 4,000 metres, I couldn't run. I just kept stopping and gulping down lungfuls of air. And so I got quite panic-stricken. I met a, a group of, I presume they were Tibetans, or at least they didn't understand a word of my, my, my basic Chinese, and they, and they just said, further, further. So I ran further, and I found the original guy. He uh, said, no, I think your friends are still down there. So I, so I sat on this alpine meadow for about an hour, scanning around with the binoculars, and luckily I saw, I didn't see my friends, I just saw our horses and our muleteer. Uh, and I recognised my rucksack on top of the horse. But for about an hour, I was fairly panic-stricken. I mean, what do you do? I've got my, my money on me. My water had run out. I figured I could walk down the mountain, but in which case I've lost my friends and uh, I've lost my rucksack, and, and what do I do then?